There it is. How about that? Was, that? that was real cute. That was fun. That was cute. First what intro. Is, was, that, was that a podcast? Yeah, that was. It's, uh, we took the music from the podcast, just switched up the the graphics, and uh, just tested it out a little bit. You know. That was cute. That was fun. I, that was I fun. like that. I like that. Wait, I don't know how do I feel you about the word "cute"? But that was I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, do are you are we? Uh, hold on. Can we? Let's see. Background music. Can we do some background music in here? Yeah, we can. Oh, I, can't, I can't. Like can't. uh. Yeah. Let's 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 dance pop. Are you playing it or me? That's you. Yeah. That's you. Dance pop, y'all. What do you know? Feeding the ducks. Oh, you guys trying to feed the ducks today? Oh, good morning, Jason. Oh, this is how you okay, feed ducks. Hold on. hold on, hold on. We're feeding ducks today, y'all. Oh, no, no, no. we're feeding ducks today. Yeah, just a little, okay, is there a volume that can go just a little bit lower? Well, I like it. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. We're in the caddy, driving in the caddy, y'all. Okay. Jason. She used to feed the ducks wonder, wonder Bread when I was like three years old, living in France. Hey, you know Monday morning, ducks are out. Yeah. Kid, kids are at school. New, new, new yeah. some bread. Would you like some <laughs> bread, duck? No, <laughs> I don't some know. Brioche. Would you Tell like some brioche? brioche? Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> I like Clark that. Wanted, happy Monday, Clark. No, man, we, we got to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Sorry, that was funny. That was we funny. had to. That was, that was, good. That was a good I like call. that. I haven't messed with like that. that. This is going to be a problem. As we figure out buns, or as I figure out the buns, this is going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> that means so many things, y'all. What's so up, things. Jason? What's up, Jason? Uh, Morning from great. North Dallas. What's up from North Dallas? What's popping in? How's the weather like in North oh. Dallas? It's still cold here in Seattle. It's still it's really, like really cold. It's uh, disgusting. I don't know what it is here. It's cold. I'm I'm an indoor cat now. I'm just down here, just working away. Yeah, I think I'm mostly in the indoors. And I mean, if it's not summertime, the, at least where I live, it's just ugly. So yeah, yeah but, oh but I, yeah, you can't can't feed ducks with sandals on, Jason. <laughs> that's they that's just that's that. good advice. We might that that's might be. Important. That's a good start to this. What that's um? Good start. What are you doing, doing Kevin? I'm feeling great. Yeah. It's Monday, you know, Mondays for people that love to do what they do, which we do. They just, it's just, it's just a, it's just such the right kick to your week, the right start to your week. I, I used to, yeah, no, no, hate Mondays, hate like them. hate them. Ooh, hate them. We had 7.50 a.m. red zone and it was not my favorite. I was not, historically not a morning person. Uh, now I have no choice with my son, but it's way different when you're waking up with the little guy uh, right. than uh, than scrambling, getting the tie on for work. Yep. Uh, you know that that agency life, East LA man. I learned a lot of good things, but I don't miss that that part of it, that commuting part. Like, oof, you get get my coffee. Like, we're we're facts. good here. We're good facts. here. You get a little automation going, a little content going, streamline some of that top of the funnel. You can work, you know, a little bit more medium, bottom of the funnel. Things become a little bit more fun. Yeah. Uh, I know we taught content last Thursday and the how to structure. And I know that was uh, how to structure a post. That's right. How to structure a post. And Hold that was more. great, man. Like it got me thinking more. I think I was just started talking. You had the outline. I just started talking. And it just matched up perfectly, right? I think it just kind of goes to show that well, then, we're a little in sync on these things. But let's let's continue we, where, uh, where we left off. We might as well layer on top of that, right? And so, you know, when we're talking about the structure of the post as we were last week, we, we dove a little bit into all the areas. But I want to get back to the top. And and that's where really the the, you know, the start of everything, the intrigue, the ability to have people read from the top to the bottom begins. And so what is the problem we're going to highlight today? The problem I want to talk about today is that most people I see on LinkedIn don't know how to hook people with the first line in their post. And I think it's for a couple reasons, which we're going to dive into today. And why does this matter? Because there's so much noise out there in the world that you have to break through. What's Go that ahead, noise? 
what is it? Email. I could just check my email this morning. I'm not even going to tell you guys the number I have. <laughs> Open Gmail from 2007. I created this account. Yep. I don't want to tell you what number I'm up to, but there is so much noise from email, from call. I think I have like 50 voicemails. Mm-hmm. Or 46 phone notif- Yeah, 46 voicemails in here. How many? How many social media platforms did you check today so far? Mm, probably Twitter and LinkedIn. Twitter, LinkedIn, just, just, Maybe just Instagram. In I'll just check the Instagram. I'll just check it now. Okay. And fa- I can check Facebook Messenger because I got a message there. So I can check four in about 10 seconds. Okay. It's too much. Okay. And then, you know, there might be a YouTube in there somewhere. And then, you know, you're going to get to your normal calls to your normal day. Right. So, and that's just, it's, it's 9 39 PST time here, 12 o'clock. Like it's only half of the day on a Monday guys. And, and how many people are, that's exactly right. They have all the emails. They have all their LinkedIn messages. They have their meetings coming up. They have their one-on-ones. They have the meet, the meetings on their calendar. They have all this noise. So it's your job to have to break through that. The way you do that, the first line of your post, because people are scrolling all day looking for information. Yeah, Go you got to capture. Well, I said, Jason said you could use some help on your hook. Jason, give us some... Um, uh, I just maybe write out a comment what your who the post like who you're writing to who the post is for the point of the post right what's what's your story of the post maybe throw that in the comments and we'll yep. we'll, we'll come up with a couple of hooks but to that point Jason the, the reality is you have five seconds to capture the attention of your reader uh, it, that, and, and that might even be too much that's probably nice that's probably nice I'm being really nice here yeah. but I, I said five seconds because that's the amount of time that you will usually take to read the first, maybe the second line. And at that point, probably 90% of people have made a determination if they're going to read the rest or if this makes no sense. So I cannot I cannot stress to people how important it is that you nail that first line if you want people to read the rest of what you have to say. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, and just to recap from Thursday, a lot of the times, where does that hook come from? It comes from speaking it out loud like this. I think if you go back to that live Thursday, we we just kind of kept coming up with a few hooks, right? Like content, like context is king, right? Or like it, it was it was that right piece here. of it. Um, there it is, right? You get it from maybe talking out loud, or a lot of the time you get it from writing the post. You'll find it kind of in the middle of the post. You'll start writing and realize like your hook is is right there. Uh, That's right. Yeah. Yo, the, you know, I I say this all the time. Clear is the new clever. And that is true. When it comes to your hook, you want it to, you want it to be very clear who it is that you're talking to. You know, I I really like specificity. You know, it's not the time to try to, to, to pack in all types of information. It's not the time to try to get them to, to understand like everything in the first two lines. No, 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 no. You just want to, you just want to say enough information to intrigue them to read the next line. Yeah. And then you want to say enough, go ahead, go ahead. I interrupted you. You please finish. No, yeah. no, no. I was going to say, you know, a, a, all we're doing in each line, it just starts with the hook is we want to say enough information in this line to get them to read this line. We want to say enough information in this line to get them to read this line until we're giving them the meat and potatoes of what it is that we're talking to them about today. Go ahead. To expand on what you just said, because it's so accurate, I think of it as because sometimes people get caught up in like their first post, they feel like they have to say 30 posts worth of stuff. So yes. I'm like, your next line can go to your next post, can go to the post after that. Don't think in terms of one post. Think of what do I want to say over the next 12 months of posting? Right. And that helps break it down. It's very similar to sales, right? Stop trying to attack every company, thousand plus companies. What are the 20 accounts this year? that you could try to break into five to 10 of them, right? Same thing with content, right? What are the hundred topics, maybe the 20 topics? How do I write those over 20 posts? Cause then you're going to get more, you're going to get more productivity out of those posts, increase impressions, everything, but also that clarity piece that Kevin talks about is huge, right? It's trying to be too cute, too clever, inside jokes, all that. No one, if no one gets it, it's not an effective post. So like, well, that was a great joke. Well, if you have to explain it, it's not right. Like you have to, think of the audience right of them getting to know you over 12 months not you sharing 
and just word vomiting everything over a couple yep. posts. I see this in people's in mails all the time, right? I got one shot at the in mail because I don't have a system where I can connect with them and follow up and do everything else. So I'm going to say everything I can in an in mail. Which, like, guess what? That's what everyone else is doing too. So you need. It's not about doing that. It's coming up with is my approach even right? Right. So it's constantly auditing that, like the content approach, the sales approach. But this is it, like just that layer, that layer less in each line is more overall. A hundred percent. And it, we talked about this on Friday. It goes it's the same with like your LinkedIn headline, for instance. Right. You, there's there's probably no amount of words you're going to put together that are going to sell somebody in your headline. But there are an amount of words that you can put together that will entreat people to go to the different places in your profile that will then tell them who you are and what you do. Yeah. But when you have a, when you have, you know, a, a, a certain amount of real estate and it's not a lot, you, you have to use it to intrigue them or you have to direct them to the place that you want them to go. When it comes to your hook, the place you want them to go is down the page. So that's all you're doing. So how do you do it? You do it with the four use. Oh, now we're getting into it. So now we're going to get to the meat and potatoes of what we're going to talk about today. Right? And so if there's nothing else you remember about what we talk about today, I would highly recommend you remember this. So when it comes to the hooks, this is these are the fundamentals. These are this is the format that we use for hooks. Number one, urgency. OK, the headline should give your hero a reason to desire the benefit sooner than later, meaning they should want to put off reading what you have made available to them. What does that sound like? What's what's an example of something that that like an, an urgent uh, hook for for a hiring manager? Off the top of your head, Clark. Urgent hook for a hiring manager. So I'm trying to think of. I got you. Yeah. Are you are you are you wasting time? Are you wasting time? On tasks you shouldn't be. Well, it could be tasks you shouldn't be. What if it's like you have like your the manager said he needs someone to start by next Monday? How are you going to get through those five hundred applicants? There you go. There's another good. There's urgency. like there's like that's like a that's not the hook I would go with, but there's that's a situation, right? I mean, then then you had the opposite end of people have no applicants, right? Someone needs to start by Monday and you have no one in the pipeline. Like now what? And, and we're doing this off the fly. Nothing yeah. was uh, was created for this. So we're just thinking this through literally. But just, yeah, just starting to think about those things. And like, cause you're the opposite end of the spectrum, right? You see sales right. roles where no one is applying. You see recruiter roles where there's thousands of applicants, right? And, and it kind of depends on the industry, right? Accounting and finance, they can't get job applicants. Construction typically doesn't get the job yeah. applicants they need. So again, it's What's all another, within the context of your industry and skill set. Go ahead. Another urgent one that we see all the time, right? App, you know, we see we see applications that have been up for three months, but have four applicants. Hey, still, st still, still posting jobs that have four applicants after two months. Have you considered looking at this? Da, 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 da. Yeah. Or, well, yeah. What did we come up with Thursday? It was, um, you know, you say you don't need an external agency but the role's been open for six months right there you go. it was it was kind of like we talked about you know if your rule is no external agencies but the result is you have no candidates how good is your rule right it's kind of a spin off right. of the no country for old men right the way he's talking to woody harrelson right if what good is the rule if the rule got you here the right. type of situation and that's like a great like those are times of the hooks and i'll have to really think about as you're you know hopefully connecting with those managers on a day-to-day -day basis that are in your and, market and but yeah. And we're doing and we're doing the bottom of this, which is being ultra specific, right? Like ur urgency posts when it comes to hiring managers, like, you know, think of the hiring managers that are wearing 10 hats, right? They, they don't want to be, but they have this role that's open, right? There, there's, an, there's, a, there's a headline that you can use to talk about the 10 hats they're wearing, right? Because they're going to feel an urgency. You know, what are the situations where they will, where you can help them feel the urgency of what they're feeling, right? And again, it goes to feeling, right? So that person that's wearing 10 hats, what do they feel every day? They feel anxious because they're getting pushed and pulled in all these areas. So you can create urgency with your headline for them where you call out the problem they have and make them feel like, oh my gosh, I need to get this solved immediately, right? So there's also that piece as well. You're, 
you're spot on and just to tie together for the you know agency recruiters this should be how you qualify every client every job order all that like if you have that approach and how you qualify business you don't just jump to the next rec that becomes available no matter the percentage or anything else you start qualifying stuff like this consistently that's why the digital recruiters that have mastered this approach they're qualifying business to this level on the sales side, on their calls and their inbox, everything else. They're taking those answers, not just to close deals, but then to also write content because those answers is going to give you all the content to understand urgency, usefulness, uniqueness, ultra specific, uh, specificity. Yep. Yeah, I nailed it. Exactly. Okay. exactly. Uh, I, had to, I had to run my finger along the box no. just, to, just to make <laughs> that <pronounce> it right. <laughs> no, hundred percent. And, and, um, and, and secondly, right, so let, let's go through this real quick because I know I, I kind of uh, I stopped and gave examples. So usefulness, right? The headline should communicate something of value to the hero. Uniqueness. The headline should suggest that whatever copy, the landing page, the blog post, the email, your message, the DM, whatever, is offering something that's unique from anything else that they've heard before. And then lastly, as we mentioned, ultra specificity. I do always try my best to avoid being vague. I want to be as specific as possible because I want to paint the picture so that people can feel what I'm saying, right? Your hero needs to know exactly what you're saying. And why is that? And then we'll, we'll go back to some of the some of the tactics for this, right? The reason why this matters is these seven reasons. It grabs the attention of your hero. It lets your hero know you're speaking to them, right? So often there's so much, there, there's so much posts out there and we don't know, is this for me? Is this for who? If in that first line you can say, "Hey, recruiters," "Hey, marketers," "Hey, this," then boom, you know immediately Clinic, you're talking to them. Clinical directors, accounting managers, nursing right. managers, uh, superintendents, right? Who's ever doing the hiring, right? Like under, like yes. You know the call to action at the bottom. It goes at the top too. You're you're calling to action that hey, this is for you. So don't forget that as well, right? Invoking curiosity, right? How can you how can you find ways to to build intrigue? Are there curiosity gaps, right? Can you say there's a secret that they're missing? Can you say that, that hey, you know, in, in your process, you guys are overlooking this one thing and it's going to revolutionize your process? You know, like, Dude, is there it's something huge. Like, let's slow down down for a second, right? Wait, let's, let's feed the ducks. Let's feed the ducks. <laughs> let's feed the ducks. All down. right, we'll feed the ducks. Let's slow down. That let's duck. Slow down. Let's feed the ducks. And that duck. Let's feed the ducks. Invoke curiosity. <laughs> slow it down because that's such an important point. <laughs> I love this. In the dust. <laughs> I did too. I did too. It's so good. All right. I'm I was gonna, on a, I'm I was gonna on feed a, the, I'm gonna feed the ducks and give my answer. I was, saying, I was on a bench for a moment, literally yeah, feeding ducks. I, I was know. there. I know. I'm getting in the zone. Is <laughs> I, I can't do yeah. the ducks. No, I gotta no. get the answer. I gotta get the answer. So, Go but the, 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 to apply this right to recruiters, like what they don't know about job boards, what they don't know about screening, what they don't know about yeah. the compensation, the pay rate in the market, yeah. what they don't know about their competitors are saying or offering, right? What like the sign-on bonuses in nursing, right? Every company, we do this sign-on bonus, that sign-on bonus. A lot of companies and hospitals don't know a sign-on bonus can be a red flag now to candidates. But I know, I, where did I learn that? I learned that from you. All the agency recruiters out there, they're telling me in the calls as we're working through this issue, right? I've learned that from you. Go teach your managers that and pique their curiosity. Your sign-on bonus could be turning away yeah. your best candidate, your next best hire. What? How, what is that? What do you mean? I got to learn more, right? Like, play, like, I thought we just had to give a $20,000 bonus. It's like, no, you're you, actually hurting you, yourself. You know what? That's a great point. Teach back and peer help. There are so many times where we think that we know and this other person on the other side knows too. Nope. Scope and scale, y'all. Scope and scale, teach back and peer help. You have to imagine that the person on the other side knows nothing about what you do. They don't understand your calls. They don't understand your processes. They don't understand your job. You have to explain it to them. They have no idea what makes you special. They have no idea, you know, the the you know the 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 the, the conversations you have that have like, like, just like Clark was saying, he learned it through having conversations with agency recruiters. How many other agency recruiters are unaware of, of the changes that have happened? Now, imagine if you're the person that makes them aware how that like, know, and trust is going to happen so much faster because you're the person informing them. 
Now you've changed your identity in, in their eyes as the person that's going to help them. Now they're more than happy to take your call because they figure, hey, this person is going to help me like they did before. Yeah, it's it, like, it's, dude, it's it's so key, right? It goes like, well, then recruiter, well, what? I'm giving away the secret sauce. There is no secret sauce. <laughs> Everyone lumps their agency recruiters all in the same bucket until proven otherwise. Right. And, and like, so that's what you're, you're doing. Everyone has been promised better candidates faster. Right. What you got to do is you got to show them how you're different. Right. I, is it fair to say you can go on my LinkedIn page is the website. There's trainings, there's case studies, there's information about our mastermind. There's information about our courses. It's pretty specific on sales and content. I still get messages. Even this morning, I want to learn, like, what do you guys actually do? Yeah, I, I try to make it pretty clear. I still get the question. So you 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 think you're over explaining it? You're, you're you never are. And those people, when they ask that, I don't blame them. People are busy. If you're an owner or you're a producer, we're busy. I don't have time to figure out everything yep. else. That's our job. That's my job to constantly be doing that. And I got to do more than you ever think possible, right? If you had it once and it clicked, post it again, repurpose it, post it again in a month, in three months, because you're going to have three months worth of new connections if you're doing it right, right on the sales side and connecting with people every day and all that, where they didn't see the post that popped off three months ago that you had, right? So it's just like, you're relentless with the four U's, like just completely relentless. And you can always iterate. You can always optimize it. There's no like end game to mm -hmm. this. It's just stuff that you're, you're internalizing and thinking about all the time and teaching, teaching, teaching. If you become a teacher on someone's feed, they are going to go to you when they need to solve that problem. Agreed. And this is how you, this is how you do it in an entertaining way. And that's the beautiful balance here. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, to, to Jennifer's point down here, um, reposting is so underrated. I have, I have embraced reposting so hard because, because the reality is there's, there's so many things that, that I, <clears throat> there's so many things that I know that help both, um, that help both sides of the aisle, that help candidates, recruiters, marketers, like, they're, going back to psychographics instead of demographics, the problems that we help with alleviate pain for so many people that are, I mean, I know we're talking about recruiters mostly here, but I also write for marketers. I write for entrepreneurs and business people. And when we're thinking again in pain points, and this goes to recruiters, right? The pain that this recruiter has guaranteed there are, or, or this hiring manager has guaranteed there are all these other hiring managers that have the same pain. And so that's that kind of goes to the teach back and peer help in terms of, you know, when when you hear these things in your conversations, when you reveal pain, when you when you when you solve problems for people, that's the important stuff in terms of making a promise. So number four, you know, when, when Clark says, you know, don't just tell people this and that show them. Well, you make a promise in the in the top hook of the headline and then you show them throughout. Right. So you show them how you solve this problem for somebody that looks just like this agency, right? They had these many people in this and they were posting jobs on this, on this place. And they thought it was field of dreams. If they posted, they would come, but working with me, they found out, right? Like what, but so make the promise, but then show them how it is that you delivered and the, the impact that you had. I've got millions of food from reposting and you can take the text, make it a, yes, make it a carousel, then a video, make it into a script. That's right. Then another text post with a picture keep cycling and that can go on X. The the uh, the you can make it into a, a script and put it on TikTok and YouTube. Um, you can repurpose it into a carousel, make it a PowerPoint presentation for you for your business. Like there's so and then that too. Right. This content usually is good for your business, too. There's so many presentations that I know people do where this is the type of information you're going to need to re, re, repost and repurpose. The more that you're thinking like that, the more that in your day to day, in your meetings, in your agency meetings, when you're meeting with this hiring manager or that, when you're pitching, this is the type of information you're going to be using in that because this is that psychological information that no matter what sales, what hooks, what headlines, it's all the same. Yeah. It, the And what to repurpose is the stuff that resonates. And you can know it, the stuff that gets the comments, the stuff that gets you the DMs or like, oh, that was spot on. Like if it resonates with your market, that's what you want to repurpose. And you'll come up typically with probably around five themes, give or take, 
that tend to kind of hit home over and over and over again with your market. And if you're ultra specific, if you're unique, if it's useful, right, to your niche, your verticals, your departments, do it over and over again, and it's going to resonate. And as you're making new connections or you're hitting the same theme over and over again, that's why people book calls with me. Like, Clark, you've talked about sales in 20 different ways, and it all resonates with me, right? And it's I, I don't appear and look like a one, you know, there's not like one solution or one trick that gets it done because I'm giving the holistic view. I'm like, this is all the things you got to think about and to attack, you know, but the theme overall is sales, right? And kind of the approaching sales and doing the work and all that. So like, that's what people are prepared when they talk to me, when they come into the program, like they know what to expect. And that's what you can do. You can expedite all this rapport building, this relationship building by giving people what to expect from you. And they know what to expect, right? Because you wrote for them, not for you. That's right. And so I'm going to get you real quick, me and Clark. I just I just want to show you what that looks like, guys. Real quick. Let's do a little diet driving. Let's see the biggest mistake I see recruiters and marketers make online, boom, you know exactly who I'm talking to, okay? I grab the attention of recruiters and marketers. So they know I'm talking to them. And if they like my writing, then they'll keep on reading. And the second line, whoops, they... They haven't recognized that if people like you, they'll buy from you, right? Specific, brings up an interesting idea, gets people intrigued if you're thinking about sales, and then you'll keep on going down, okay? Clear. A little more on the clever side, right? Making, you know, maybe invoking a little bit more on the curiosity, um, a little bit more on the uniqueness. Don't lie. You throw out the first slice in the loaf, right? Don't you? How many people throw out the first slice in the loaf? So I used a common, a commonality in life to intrigue people, to get them to listen to the business lesson that was going further down the page, right? And then lastly, and I'll go to Clark's, ever spoken, texted, message, carrier pigeon, telephone, Campbell soup can with a recruiter, okay? Now, any recruiter knows that we do all kinds of ways of which we communicate with candidates. Well, we're... No matter what, we'll text, we'll carry a pigeon. No matter what it takes to reach somebody, we will reach them. So to any recruiter that understands that, I've hooked them. Now they're going to want to read the end down, right? Okay, now let me go to Clark's real quick for you. Let me show you Clark's. Uh oh. Because Clark does the same thing. I'd even say Clark is probably even more ultra-specific than me. It's because I do this. I feed the ducks. Well, right. You feed the ducks. Let's look at Clark's. Some more examples. <laughs> Biggest outreach mistake I see recruiters making. Very specific. What out, an outreach mistake. It's for recruiters, right? There's an urgency to it. Because if you're making this mistake right now, you're like, you need to know so that you can stop making that mistake. You yeah. feel it. And honestly, gonna... I, prob I probably should have put not replying to their outreach messages below where you mix you say uh, show more and see more. Uh, so. <laughs> no, nah, nah, it's, but, but it's still the point. It's still, it's yeah. still the point of, again, very specific. You, you know exactly who yeah. it's for, but the post is still strong. Cause it's, it is targeted, but in terms of LinkedIn and optimizing that, like, again, those are the things to look at and you start posting and you're like, oh crap. Like I made that post and I forgot to do that. Like that's part of the equation too. Like that can happen. Uh, right. Ultra specific. Most recruiters would love to bill a million dollars this year or even 500,000 K right grab the prospect's attention, invokes curiosity because who doesn't have a dream of billing that much, right? You, 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 you kind of made a promise, right? Most recruiters would love. So you're probably, you're probably thinking that the answer or the, you know, the situation of somebody doing it is going to be in here. So let me go ahead and keep on reading further down. That's more. Let's see. I like that one though. Chicken in the Which egg, one? sales or marketing. I thought that was a fun one. Chicken or the egg, sales or marketing. Which one arrived on the scene first? Ah, there you go. Right. So for 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 anybody that's in sales and marketing, you know this is this is a common a common theme when it comes to it. Right. It's going to pique a lot of people's interest because people people are going to want to have a, an opinion on this. This is going to give people want to be opinionated, so they're going to want to read it. And then I guarantee at the end, they're going to want to say chicken or the egg because they feel a certain way. Go ahead, Clark. I was going to say like, yeah, typically these posts don't get, don't typically get double digit likes. 
So for me, when I see this get 22, like I know the post resonated. The guest, obviously, Darren is awesome, right? And he's got the D1 football background. So I think that definitely appealed. But this was more of the headline doing the work and get to the C more. It's like, it's just an interesting, again, knowing what's talked about in recruiting right now. And it's January where people put in their budgets and their time to and everything else. Sales and marketing is top of mind with pretty much everyone right now, right? Every business. So, uh, and so like that's, again, that's where it kind of resonated, but I'm able to kind of compare that to other times where I post a podcast, right? Every week and kind of see the reactions. And so I'm always just evaluating and studying it. I don't care if it gets 22 or 12 yeah. or 52 likes. I, I really don't. Uh, it just is always a helpful reminder. I can always kind of grade myself on that piece and something doesn't blow up or I don't care. That's fine. Right. So I can always learn something from it. So. Well, that's such a good point, and it's something we should highlight. It's it's very important. Is the you know the more specific you are, you know, the more that you're actually using the four U's, it's probably likely that your impressions are going to go down. Yeah. And it's because we challenge people, at and first. we're not afraid. At, at first. first, while you're kind of recalibrating the audience right. with two and all that, but again, if you're connecting with them right using some automation or you're dialed in at least connecting manually, do they always be building that network every single day? with who you're talking to and that's how you're going to amplify your message. Um, as long as it's, you know, once you get the, once you get the approach, right. Yeah. I just meant it from a, you know, you're going to be challenging people. You're going to be saying things that are practical and useful. You're going to be, you're, you're going to be, you know, oftentimes when you're talking to business owners, they're not going to want to admit a lot of these issues, but if, if your content is gearing towards alleviating their pain, then where, where, where are you going to get the most impressions in the places you care most in your DMS, in your messages back from your emails, right? Because they're going to recognize that you were that person that helped them. So, I, I, you know, as much as as much as we like to say we're kind of the anti-viral, we, we're not looking to go viral. We're just looking to have impact. Um, you know, that's what really the four U's are. It's having yeah. impact with exactly the right people that you actually want to reach, and not reaching all these additional people that you're going to have sub conversations with that that don't really go towards your bottom line. It doesn't matter. Dude, this was uh, this was a fun little thirty minute one today. We're gonna go. For, we're going for an hour on Friday. Yes, twelve. And we're one. gonna be doing some writing. We're gonna be doing some writing on Friday. That's gonna be a ton of fun. Uh, we appreciate everyone tuning in today. Jason, Jennifer, yes. uh, we had some other comments here. I want to shout people out. Give me a second, uh, please do. Uh, Monday, Monday. Uh, who else do we? Who else do we got? I just lost it. Do you see some of them on your end? I lost. Uh... I see. Do not. <laughs> I don't have any on my Yeah, I just saw some. There was someone from South Africa here. I mean, it was. Oh, crazy. nice. Yeah, it was cool. Um, no, mine's not there. Guys, that, that is weird. And it has been acting funny. But yeah, mine's yeah. gone. That's weird. Yeah, I just saw like a bunch of comments that were good, but I saw someone from South Africa, which was pretty sweet. So, um, no, lo love doing this and appreciate the comments. Uh, again, oh, there we go. There we go. Did you Musiani, get Musiani, Chantel, Jason. That's what I was looking for, Let's man. Let's see. Yeah. There we go. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, I appreciate you. Again, if you want the free module we talked about last Thursday, admin at digitalrecruiter.io on how to structure posts. The free module we're not putting in the comments. We're only putting it for people that pay attention yes. to the live. But we'll, I'll get you uh, a free module to our How to Create Content That Sells course. Uh, make sure to check out uh, my featured profile, my featured section on the profile for info on our sales and marketing mastermind, our courses, how to talk to me if you want to learn more about how to implement some of this stuff with your business, right? Kevin is our director of client experience. He works with all our clients one-on-one. -on -one. I work with them one-on-one -on -one as well. So we are pretty hands-on yes. uh, with all this stuff. So definitely make sure to check that out. On Friday, Please. we're going to be workshopping. We're going to be feeding the ducks probably again Friday. We're going to be workshopping some content. We're going to have some more fun and we'll do it for an hour. Kevin, I appreciate you, yeah. brother. Always fun. Yeah. And, hey, anybody, y'all, you guys want the four U's? Shoot me a DM. Shoot, yeah. We got you. I'll send it to you. I got you. Okay. I'll help you. Let me know. Hey. Appreciate y'all. Happy Monday. Hey. Let's rock this week, y'all. Let's do it.